All right, guys, we're back to the subclass series. Uh, we are on to the Way of Shadow Monk subclass. Indeed. Again, just to review for you guys, uh, if you haven't watched the other videos or if you're confused, this is the subclass and how it improves upon the base class. Not, not necessarily how good the subclass right. is in the grand scheme, but how much it improves on the base class. Or anything to remember with any kind of video like this, whether you're watching ours or anybody else's, is everything is subject to change based on the campaign you're in. Because certain things, if you're playing a very RP-heavy campaign, you need more RP elements. If you're doing like yeah. political intrigue, assassination mysteries involved in a big city, or if you're doing a big adventuring campaign, just as much about adventuring and exploring new territory as actual fighting stuff, then yeah, I think things kind of change in their way. This is just yeah. kind of our general thoughts on how things are built off the baseline of what the class is. At level three, you get Shadow Arts. You can spend two key points to cast a certain number of spells without using their components, and those would be Darkness, Dark Vision, Pass Without a Trace, or Silence. You also gain access to the Minor Illusion Cantrip, if you don't already know it. So uh, most of these spells, if you don't know what they do, are, well, half of them are combat-based and half of them are <laughs> RP-based, but they're all basically based around stealth and being sneaky. It's kind of like, you with this subclass, you're kind of like the monk that wants to be a rogue. Without actually taking the time to multi-class into rogue. At level 6, we get probably my favorite ability in this subclass, which mm. is... <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, which is Shadow Step. Uh, essentially, you can use a bonus action to teleport, yes, teleport, uh, as a non-magic user, from an area of dim light or darkness to another area of dim light or darkness. So you can... You know, at the start of your turn, you just be like, boom, pop, cover up ground. Because even monks, who are the most mobile of the mobile classes, uh, can always move faster. Can always move faster. <laughs> In this case, teleport. Um, and the, the extra little caveat that makes this about as close to bust as you can get for a level 6 ability, in my opinion anyway, uh, is you get advantage on your first attack every time you use this ability. Not once, not once per short rest, once per long rest. As a bonus action, every turn, you can teleport up to 60 feet and then have advantage on your first melee attack that turn. Yep. That's pretty good. Ooh, that's fun. Mm. So when we go through the idea of... Uh, you mentioned the whole multi-class rogue thing. You read rogue sneak attack. You either have to have an, another in, another partner close within five feet mm -hmm. or if you have an advantage on attack. Well, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Shadow Step says... You get advantage if you use a bonus action to teleport first. Mm -hmm. Whoosh, sneak attack every single turn. Now, granted, the one thing it does it gives you another option, so you can't use your flurry of blows on the same time. Same time you yeah, use this, this is a bonus action, but <clears throat> it's another option, and this does not require key points. So it just mm -hmm. takes your bonus action to use. So more versatility and option, what you can do, and a very good ability at that. Another pro tip. Play something small like a halfling or a gnome, and just stand in your friend's shadow, so you're always in in dim light. And then you just teleport to your target's shadow. At level 11, you get Cloak of Shadows. Ooh. You can, as long as you're in dim light or darkness, you can use a, an action to turn invisible. Blink, you're gone. As long as you do not make an attack, cast a spell, or enter an area of bright light. So you can move. You can move. Yes. Um, it's going to be up to your DM's discretion how much he likes you or not. <laughs> what he considers to be uh, bright light, because that's very vague. Yes. So... There, there could easily be some heated discussions depending on how civil you and your DM are about things. This goes back to always respect your DM. It's okay to ask things mm -hmm. and ask for things, but also know when to drop things. Because this is one of those scenarios, if you're respectful to your DM and don't poke your DM till he wants to punch you in the throat, like I try not to do with my DM most of the time, I'll ask, like, does this work like this? He'd be like, I don't think so. Like, All right. Because I know if I had a ability like this, I'd poke him for snot to like to use that thing, something awesome. But I mm -hmm. be selective about how what you poke your DM for, so make it count. Yeah. You don't want to be the boy who cried wolf and just keep poking the DM like a bear. You'll yeah. eat your fan. Bribes can be be helpful as well. Yes. The last ability you get, Way of the Shadow, is Opportunist at level seventeen, as with most of the capstone abilities, level seventeen. Um, essentially, what you can do is if you know an enemy next to you that you're in with range of gets attacked, you can then use your reaction as a Way of Shadow monk to then attack them again far as how it's worded is because the enemy is distracted by being hit by somebody else. His focus is on them. So then you can around and pop him right side of the jaw because he's not looking at you. Um, not necessarily a bad ability. Yeah. It's it's another it's another use for your reaction, yeah. but it does use your reaction. So you won't, be able to, you won't be able to use your reaction again until 
another full rotation of the turn. Yeah. It's kind of one of those things. Just gives you another, another once again, more versatility for your mm -hmm. reaction. So it doesn't require to, you know, somebody just to run by you so you could use it. But else like that, you know, it just gives you more more option, which is nice. But to me, a little underwhelming as yeah, a cap cap zone that requires a reaction. Uh, once a turn extra attack, or once a round, sorry, yeah. once a round extra attack that uses your reaction. It's not necessarily bad, but just said underwhelming, I think, is the right word. Yeah. All right, guys, we made it to the rating section, and yes. we're going to be talking about the RP value, yes. the combat value, and the overall class synergy. First up, we have the RP value. We decided to give this a 3.5 out of 5. Three uh, flumps. Half. Flump Reno. Flumps. Flumps. Primarily because um, you have some RP abilities here. Some of the spells that you get, like dark Darkness, can be combat-based, yeah. sure. Uh, dark Vision is more... Uh, RP, Pest Flame Trace is also more RP because you're going stealth mode and stuff like that. Um, those are decent. Minor uh, Illusion is also more of an RP thing. You're yeah. very rarely going to ever use that in combat. Uh, Shadow Step, you could use this to track people or to stalk people. It could be mm -hmm. really interesting yes. as an RP <laughs> event. Um, Culture Shadows, Culture Shadows is, you become invisible. There's all kinds of RP. Um, they're not like major RP things, but they, they have like some... Some little possible yeah. uses here yeah. and there that could make it worthwhile. That, you know, they are very strong RP abilities on a very narrow road. Yes, <laughs> that's, like, that's why they I'm are only of... good for this one little bit, itty bitty living space. Yeah. Oh, that's a great reference. There. Um, <laughs> they are they are super super good for you know, being a roguish style mm -hmm. monk at you know being stealthy, following people, tracking somebody down without being known you're there, listening to the conversation, espionage kind of stuff. Yeah, but that's the only RP value you get out of this class Pretty is much. being Stealth. sneaky. And Modern Illusion as a cantrip. That's it. On the combat side, I went with four flumps. Um, primarily because of two abilities that are really, really good. Um, with Shadow Step and Cloak of Shadows both. I mean, well, you, you just re Cloak of Shadows. Okay, Invisibility is straight, straight an RP thing. I, I, the first thing I thought of is, is stra you know strategically combat. You could literally just go invisible to start a combat mm -hmm. and you position yourself and they have no idea where you're at and things. It's it's a very strategic, you know, pre planned thing in advance. And of course, Shadow Step is probably one of the better level six abilities we've seen. Yeah, it's pretty good. For a subclass being able to just every turn bonus action teleport sixty feet. Yeah. Good lord. That's double the movement speed most classes are gonna get. Yeah, it's pretty good. And then you can move on top of it. And then you can move again. So, you, I mean, you could easily... Like, as a, and it doesn't use a spell slot. Right. Because on, on, on our movement, you know, with, with Monk, you could easily be moving, you know, yeah, 90, 90 feet a turn with no dash. And plus, it's a getting that advantage. So, you automatically get advantage on that first attack every single turn. No key points spent. You can save your key points for something else. Of course, the only thing to keep in mind, and probably the only reason why this wasn't a little higher on the combat score, was that... That that shadow step uh, does take your bonus action to use, yep. so you can't. It's great to have more versatility, mm -hmm. which this class gives you more versatility. What the the baseline monk does, yeah. But it it takes away also from the opportunity to use your your your, your big one being your flurry of blows. Yeah, it doesn't build on any of the other baseline monk abilities you use your key points for. It just gives you another option, which is cool, which is good. Yeah, but it also reduces the opportunity you could use use those for something else. And then lastly, we hope to have the overall class synergy. Yes. Um, this was a little bit of a mixed bag for us. We kind of debated this a little bit. But we just had, <laughs> had to go with a three and a half out yep. of five. Um, primarily because you do get some bonuses here, but like we were just mentioning in the combat side, some of those bonuses actually detract from some of your baseline abilities. Yeah. So the, while the some of the you know abilities are good here and you get some more versatility, it doesn't improve the base abilities that you have. No. Um, but they do have some thematic things, like with the uh, ev the whole evasiveness thing yeah. of the monk, which is kind of a side theme of the monk, I would say, because right. they're very agile and nimble, and yeah. just have being evasive and hard to, to to pick on is just part of the class, so being sneaky helps with that, so. Sure. Um, three and a half. Not, not, not amazing, not bad, um, better than normal. Better than average. But uh, nothing, nothing that's going to, like, make you really improve on the baseline too much. But, uh, guys, that's going to be basically our thoughts on the Way of the Shadow yes. Monk subclass. 
Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe, hit the bell notification for all of our new videos. If you have anything you want to say about this video, about some of our other videos, about D&D, about gaming, anything else in general, uh, please let us know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, thanks, thanks for watching. watching.